Here's an essay that I just wrote and I'm about to send out to the Cove congregation. The title is Unity in a Divided Country. I think it's pretty hard to deny that we're living in a divided nation. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure we've been this divided since the early 70s. And these divisions are being stoked by the, by the most powerful people in the United States. Of course, for me, this division was brought home this past week with all the controversy surrounding the NFL. I mean, what started as a, a protest about racial injustice has morphed into a complex array of absolute assertions and inflexible positions. On one side, there are Americans who say that kneeling during the national anthem is an affront to what's most sacred to us as a people, which is, of course, our flag. In fact, by not standing, these SOBs are showing disrespect to every person who's died in service to America and who and should be immediately fired at the very least. Now, that's one side. On the other side, though, there are the athletes, a majority of whom are African-American, who say they're protesting something that the majority of Americans can't really understand. And these players assert that what they're doing reflects a fundamental right all Americans should have, the right to speak freely without fear of persecution, in other words, the right to protest. And the NFL owners are caught in the middle, assured of revenue loss regardless of the side they pick, because there's one thing of which we can be sure. A segment of their audience will be, will be angry by whatever they decide to do and will probably burn whatever it is they have to burn, swear off pro football and start watching bar rescue repeats on Sunday afternoon. Of course, this is just one obvious sign of our divided society. It doesn't take much imagination to see a lot, a lot more. And I'm talking about the divisions between black and white, rich and poor, progressive and conservative. And throw a dart at a topic, you'll find a division. I mean, whether it involves health insurance, tax reform, or how to deal with either the dictator of North Korea or the one in Russia, there doesn't seem to be a national consensus on anything. But more than that, Americans have made the decision that to listen to anyone on the other side is a sign of weakness and that to compromise is the same thing as caving. And to make matters even worse, while leaders in the past at least talked about unity and oneness, those who run this modern show seem almost energized by creating and maintaining differences. With every issue, there must be winners and losers, or so we're told. Name-calling has replaced mutual respect, and each of us are told to view those outside our tribe as un-American or, and or deranged. Sadly, this would seem to be the state of our country, and unless something fundamentally changes, it'll continue to be regardless of who wins or loses. But I believe fundamental change is possible, and I believe it begins in the church among people of faith. Of course, I understand that some of you all have doubts, and I admit, given our past, those doubts are justified. I mean, how many times has the Presbyterian Church itself divided over issues that, that don't involve faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If we can't maintain unity within the Church, how can we possibly help our society overcome those things that divide us? Now, that's a good question. But I'll tell you, it's one that Paul answered in Galatians. Now, it's important to remember that the Galatian churches were torn apart by their own divisions and controversy, with some Christians adopting the Jewish law as a way to demonstrate how faithful they were, and others sticking with the gospel of grace that Paul proclaimed. And it was to this divided community that Paul wrote, Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith should be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we no longer are subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are the children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. In other words, faith in Jesus Christ changed everything. It made all those issues that people used to separate themselves from one another, well, ir irrelevant. 
and that common focus should enable and encourage folks to put aside those divisive issues. In other words, although the differences were still present, a community that trusts in the love and mercy of God, something shown by Christ and made known by the Holy Spirit, that community could transcend whatever others used to divide. And I'll tell you, that can be both the example that, that the church shows and the message that it shares. I mean, if Paul was right, then the body of Christ is the one place that should neither deny nor be threatened by differences. You see, not only do we share a common faith, regardless of our backgrounds and opinions, our differences actually enhance our ability to reach everyone with the good news of mercy and compassion. And as we engage with the world around us, we can stress that what unites us is far more important than what divides. That it's not about who wins and who loses, but about how we can become more and more the people God created us to be. And when those divisive forces rear their heads, we can listen assured that our destinies are in hands far stronger than our own, and we can work so that the waters might be stilled and to, to reinforce our attention so that we can see and claim all the things we can accomplish together. Now, I don't know how the NFL situation will end, but regardless of who wins, I've got a gut feeling all football fans will lose. And frankly, I think that applies to many of the other issues and situations by which we feel torn apart. But of course, that doesn't have to be the case. Not if we believers claim the unity about which Paul wrote and decide to live within the body of Christ and share it with the world around us. Amen.